Jesus says this, This is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. This afternoon's sermon is entitled, To Know Christ. Jesus said this is life eternal, to know God and His Christ. And so, for us to be saved for eternity, to be saved from our past sins, knowledge of God, the one true God, and His Messiah, His Savior, His Christ, is essential. We just passed a time when many in the religious world focused upon the birth of Jesus. And as Christians, we are ever thankful for the birth of the Christ, the coming of the Lord in the flesh, and we honor His birth every day of the year so as to be pleasing to God through obedience to His Word. When the Bible says that we need to know God and His Christ, it doesn't say just one time a year. To specify a specific time of year then would be to separate the importance of knowing God and Christ the rest of the year. It makes it less important. It delegitimizes it. Which is just the opposite of what individuals who think they are celebrating the birth of Jesus think they are doing. I appreciate that at least at some point during time, they are thinking about the birth of Jesus. And that gives us opportunity to teach because at least their minds are on the, on things that are religious. And it gives us an opportunity to teach. And so this lesson is to remind us of what it means to know God and His Christ. We don't want to take that for granted. Obviously, as Christians, we have come unto a knowledge of the truth, been saved from our past sins, but we don't want to take for granted the fullness of that meaning of what it means to know God and His Christ. But also we want to be able to teach our friends and our neighbors and family members that to know Christ is more than just to say something about Jesus or to celebrate one time a year or two times a year the birth or the death or the resurrection of the Christ. To know Christ biblically and scripturally as is pleasing to God that will lead us to eternal life, John 17 verse 3, is much more than just having knowledge of Him or saying that we know Him. We know that the Bible tells us that there will be many on the last day, John chapter or Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through verse 23, that will say unto Him, Lord, Lord. They will claim Him as Lord, and they will claim to have done many wonderful things in His name. And it may be the case that they did do lots of things, claiming that it is in His name, but the Bible says just because they say it doesn't make it so. So we want to make sure that we understand and that we appreciate what it means to know God and His Christ, but also to be able to teach others, especially while it may be fresh on their mind, the idea of what it means to know Christ or the importance of knowing Christ. This is life eternal, Jesus said, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. When we look at the New Testament, we find that to know Christ is not just to know of Him, but to know what He taught. To know Christ is to know the truth. John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we are to know Christ, then we are to know truth. It's hard to believe that there are so many people who are religious and minded and claim to know Christ, but then claim to be subjectivism or uh, subjectivists. They claim that there are certain things that they can't know for sure. When Jesus said, I am the truth, well, how can you know Jesus and not know the truth? Because Jesus said, I am the truth. And so, there are so many individuals who are confused. They think they know Christ. They say they know Christ. But then they claim that there's certain certain things you can't know for sure. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. In John chapter 20, 
as John ends his Gospel account, verse 30, the Bible says, Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of His disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. To know Jesus, to know Christ, is to know the truth. When we read the Gospel accounts, we read about His life, we read about what He taught, we read about what He did. And though there are no miracles being performed today, we know miracles took place in the first century and they were performed to prove that He was the Christ, the Son of God. And to know Christ, we must know what is written about Him by these inspired men. And John said, these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. So to know Christ is to know what is written Right? You can't separate the Word of God from God Himself. To know God, to know Christ, is to know that which is written. These things are written, why? That you might believe. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Romans 10 verse 17. We can't know God aside from truth. We can't know the Christ aside from truth. Without revealed knowledge or without revelation of Christ, Without His revealed Word, we know nothing. We know nothing of God. We know nothing of His Christ. We know nothing as it pertains to salvation. So to know Christ means that we must know truth because He is the truth and because these things are written that we might believe and believe that He is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. To know Christ is also to know that we have sinned. If you truly know Christ, then you know that we have sinned. In Romans, chapter 3, verse 23, the writer says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, if we come short of the glory of God and we know God and we know His Christ, then we know we've come short of it. And we know that we have sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When people talk about knowing Jesus and knowing Christ, how often do they bring up sin? They very rarely bring up the idea of sin. But sin is not a pleasant thing to talk about, but it's necessary for us to be saved to understand sin. And if we know Christ, if we know God, then we know that we have sinned because we have separated ourselves from Him. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. It is our sins and iniquities that cause us to be separated from God. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21, the Bible says about Mary, she shall bring forth a son Thou shalt call His name Jesus, for He shall save His people from their sins. (laughs) How can we know Jesus if we don't know why He came here for? Of all the talk that took place during during this holiday season about Jesus and His birth, how many people talked about sin? That we know that we have sinned. That was the reason Jesus came was to save us from sin. In John chapter 8, verse 24, Jesus says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. If ye believe not that I am He, ye shall die in your sins. To know Christ is to know that we have sinned and separated ourselves from God. In 1 John chapter 5, Verse 13. John says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So to know the truth and to know God and His Christ is to know that we have sinned. <clears throat> 
Because that's why Jesus came to this earth, right? Luke 19, verse 10, to seek and to save that which was lost. If we know Christ, then we know His purpose. You can't separate Jesus from His work. And if His work was to save people from their sins, then we have to acknowledge that we have sinned. To know Christ is not just to know the truth and to know then that we have sinned, but to know how bad sin is. How bad is sin? Only God could tell us how bad sin is. Generally speaking today, most people don't think sin's that bad. <laughs> right? Generally speaking, most people think, well, sin is uh, something that I can do primarily uh, alone and get away with it and it really not harm anybody, not hurt anybody. No harm, no foul. Right? That's the way people really look at sin today. But only God could determine what how bad sin is because He determined what right is. And when, when right is transgressed, 1 John 3, verse 4, then that's the definition of sin, transgression of the law. And when the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 26, among other places, but Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, when Jesus refers to the Lord's Supper, the institution of it, He's speaking of the grape juice as a, an emblem of His blood. says, This is My blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. How bad is sin if we know Christ and we know that Christ shed His blood and the purpose of His shedding of blood was because sin was so bad that the only thing that could take care of it or remit our sins was that He sacrificed Himself, die on a cross, and shed His own precious blood that He was innocent of any sin. That tells us how bad sin is, doesn't it? When Jesus had to die on the cross for the sins of the world, that tells us how bad sin is. It tells us how bad sin is because of all the things God could have chosen to take care of sin, He said the only thing that can take care of it is My only begotten Son. Now who in a fleshly mind, would say the only way I can take care of this problem is to sacrifice my only child. Nobody would say that. Or they? Nobody, no human in their right mind would say this is the solution. But God, knowing how bad sin was, said this is the only solution. That my only begotten Son must shed His blood and that's the only thing that can remit sins. Take away sin. Of course, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, the Bible says that Jesus purchased the church with His blood. That sin was so bad that it took the shedding of the Christ's blood. To know the Christ then is to know how bad sin is. Because he came to remit, or he came to shed his blood, so that the remission of sins would be made possible. And of course, we know that remission of sins is made possible through obedience to the gospel. Acts chapter two, verse thirty-eight: Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. So, to know Christ is to know how bad sin is. Much may have been said this holiday season about the good the glad tidings and good news of Jesus' birth. But how much was talked about about how bad sin is? Because if we are to know Christ, we know how bad sin is. To know Christ is also to know faithfulness. Jesus was truly faithful unto death. He broke no laws. He came and perfectly fulfilled His Father's will. In fact, when He was a young boy, he told his mother and father that that was his purpose here on earth. I am here to do the will of my Father. In 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 5, John writes, Whoso keepeth God's word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know that we know Him. Or know that we are in Him. 
How do we know? Through faithfulness to the Word. Through obedience to the Word. If we keep His Word, then we know that we are in Him. Well, Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 that we be like Him. That we be one in the Father as He and the Father are one. That we also might be one. To know God was to know Christ. To know Christ was to know God. How do we know that? Because Christ kept the Word faithfully. In Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, Speaking of how God spoke to man during different dispensations, he says in verse 2 Hath in these last days the Christian age, the age that we live in today, has spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir over all things, by whom also he made the world. Notice verse 3 Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. The express image. When, we, when Jesus told his disciples, When you see me, you have seen the Father. It was an exact duplicate, a stamp. When you see me, you see God. The express image. Upholding all things by the word of His power when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now notice how God speaks to man today through His Son. His Son speaks to us through the revealed word, through truth. But He also speaks to us through how He lived, doesn't He? When we see the example of the Christ, we know how to live. We know what it means to be faithful. Jesus was faithful in all things. It may be, when we, when we define faithfulness, we understand that means to know God's Word and do it. But we see it applied in Jesus' life. We can simply look at how He lived, and He literally lived the Word of God. That's the reason... The Bible refers to Him as being the Word. John chapter 1, verse 1. And the Word became flesh. John 1, verse 14. He literally lived the Word. Now we are to be faithful. We are, we are not sinlessly perfect in that we falter and therefore we have a way uh, to have our sins forgiven. But Jesus needed no forgiveness. That's the faithfulness. He, that's how we, we should follow His example in being faithful in trying to be exactly God-like. To know God and to be like Him. To know Christ is to know faithfulness because we see what faithfulness truly is. When we look at the faithfulness of Jesus, we see how, how, how uh, truly limited we are and we see that in our faithfulness doesn't come anywhere close to the faithfulness of Jesus. Because He fulfilled every word. He fulfilled the law that was given. And that made Him the perfect sacrifice and our perfect high priest. In Matthew chapter 26, we read of Jesus' faithfulness Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, as he prays in the garden, he says, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as Thou wilt. Now that's faithfulness. Faithfulness is not my will, but Thy will. And Jesus didn't just preach not my will, but Thy will. He practiced it, didn't He? Uh, in verse uh, 52, Peter had uh, struck uh, the servant's ear. And Jesus said, Put up again thy sword into its place, for all, that, all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou not that I cannot uh, now pray to my Father, and He shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But notice His answer to that. I have the power to do it. He says, but how then shall the Scriptures be fulfilled? Just because He had the power to do something, Jesus was going to be faithful to the Father's will. 
His number one priority was faithfulness. Verse 56, all this was done that the Scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. That was Jesus' whole goal in life, was to fulfill the will of the Father. And so it's preached, yes, but He lived it. And so to know Christ is to know faithfulness. To put God's will above my own desires. And then to put that into practice. To know Christ is to know service. In John chapter 13, verse 12, Jesus had washed His disciples' feet. He sat down with them and He said, Know ye what I have done to you? You call Me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily I say unto you that the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. To know Christ is to know service. Humility. He says the servant's not above his Lord, and if the Lord is going to submit to his servants, that tells what kind of servants the Lord wants. Humble. Submissive. Serving in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Paul says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So take the mind of Christ about what we're about to talk about. Let this be your mindset. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God because He was God but made of Himself no reputation and took upon Him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now that's service, isn't it? That's humility. Being God in the flesh, He took on the form of a servant. He humbled Himself and became obedient unto death. So to know Christ is to know humility and service. To know Christ is to know the way to reconciliation. When we know Christ, we know that Christ came to save us from our past sins. We know that we've sinned. We know how bad sin is. But we know the way to reconciliation because of the Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Me. So when we know Jesus, we know how to get to the Father. We know how to be reconciled back to God. In John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, Jesus says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear His voice, and shall come forth they that have done good to the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, as we quoted just moments before, we find out how one is reconciled to God. How He has His sins remitted. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That reconciliation was made possible by the blood of Christ. Our knowing how bad sin is, our knowing that we are in sin and need to get out of it. It's made possible by the life of the Christ, His faithfulness, His service, His humility, His submission to the will of the Father. All of these things are necessary, but also is our following of the example of Jesus. And to know Christ is to know the way to reconciliation. To think that reconciliation comes by nothing of my own doing is not to know Christ. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15. 
to know Christ is to know His will, and to know His will is to know how we're reconciled back to God. And to know Christ is to know sacrifice. Even once we're reconciled back to God, Jesus said, if you love Me, the world will hate you because the world hated Me before it hated you. John 3, verse 16, to know Christ is to know sacrifice for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. To know Christ is to know sacrifice. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that she should follow in His steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in His mouth. Who when He was reviled, reviled not again. When He suffered, He threatened not, but committed Himself to Him that judgeth righteously. Who His own self bare our sins in His own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live to righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. To know Christ is to know sacrifice. And the Bible says here that He left us an example to follow when it comes to sacrifice. That He committed Himself not to vengeance, but to Him who judges righteously. Right? And so when we do the will of the Father today, we need to remember that we do so with the glory of the Father in mind. And to those who would say that there is nothing on our behalf that we must do to be saved, must only look at verse 24 to note that yes, Jesus did the hard part. But then we must be dead to sin. To be dead to sin means that we must stop doing sin. <laughs> if we're dead to life, then we're, we stop living. That's dead to life. You stop living life. If you're dead to sin, you stop sinning. And then he says, stop living in sin and live to righteousness. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation to the Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. It goes back to the revelation of Jesus, doesn't it? To know Jesus is to know truth. And then from there, it all goes down, doesn't it? To know truth is to know that we've sinned, to know how bad sin is, to know the requirement of faithfulness and service, to know how to be reconciled back to God, and to know sacrifice. That is what it means to know Christ. And that's what it meant to us as we became Christians, and that's what it means to us as we remain faithful to God. And it must be what we teach others as we let them know that yes, life eternal is this, to know God and His Christ. But to know Christ, one must know truth, faithfulness, service, reconciliation, and sacrifice. The Gospel plan of salvation, God's plan to make one righteous, God's plan to reconcile has been revealed to us in the New Testament. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Faith leads us to repent of our past sins and confess that our sins can only be washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ. That takes place in water baptism. When we put on Christ, we are dead to sin, we bury sin, we rise to walk in newness of life, a new creature, following the example of the perfect One, the Reconciler, the Lord Jesus Christ. When we do that, we know Christ. And we have followed His example. And then we must remain faithful to the end just as He did. Faithful to the cross was Jesus. We must be faithful unto death as well. Those here who have already obeyed the Gospel perhaps have some other need. And if that be the case, we're here to...